the Rooted Family Podcast, where we learn how to mindfully boost our brains for optimal health and learning. Join me, Erin Sadler, teacher, speaker, brain health coach, yoga instructor, founder of the Rooted Family, but most importantly, mom of three, as we talk about how we can bring peace, prosperity, and fun into homes, schools, and communities. We all want to raise families that thrive in the world, not just survive. And this podcast will help you do just that. Thanks for joining us. Let's get growing together. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining me today. I'm so excited today because we have Tina Paulus Krause joining us. She is amazing. And she joins us. She started her own company. It's called True You Teams. She's a speaker, author, and host of an online show called Your Leadership Academy. After 22 years in corporate America, Tina took the leap and founded a leadership development company, True You, dedicated to helping women become stronger, healthier, evolved leaders. Her passion is transformation speaking and training, helping people become the best leader in themselves and others they can be. Tina walks the walk and talks the talk. After a complete transformation of her own, Tina learned how to powerfully reprogram long-held beliefs, change toxic habits, and create sustainable results. Tina has made it her mission to help leaders and teams dig deep and learn to empower themselves to reach their fullest potential. Because, you know, our world is dramatically changing and we also have to change with it and how we develop our leadership skills has to too and after 20 years in the business and leadership journey she provides a perfectly unique and well-rounded framework where she speaks and coaches from a place of true authenticity and she helps others create sustainable change and become their own best coach and I will say from a businesswoman perspective and from a mom perspective, Tina has five adult children, so she speaks from experience. I have been able to glean so much, um, and I always think it's such a great idea when we see somebody who is walking a few steps ahead of us on the path. Um, it speaks so much when they turn around and offer a hand and pull you up, and Tina has done that for me. Um, she so many times has helped me in this process of starting my own business and um, really being identifying with my authentic self and finding out how my authentic self can help others bring out their authentic selves, which then helps them bring it out in their own children so we can all live in our truths. So I'm so excited for you to join me with Tina today in our discussion. If you are looking for more information, I'll put all of Tina's information in the show notes. And you guys know you can always find me at therootedfamily.com and check out any of my free resources, my free ebook, um, How Can We Get Your Family Started on the Journey to Creating Calm Out of Chaos and Peaceful Parenting that Resonates Through the Whole Family. We want to mindfully boost those kiddos' brains. Hi, everybody. I'm so excited, like I said in the intro, to have Tina here with us today from True You Teams. And you guys already know her background a little bit, so we're just going to dive right in. One of the things I admire so much about Tina is, and I think this is a really a gift, Tina, is that you walk in your Aww. truth. I love your honesty Aww, you. and your journey as a mom and someone who found what makes their soul happy is pretty amazing. You embrace all the mess that life is and that we all experience. And then you turn it into a beautiful piece of art, which I just find so inspiring. So thank you for being with us today. Absolutely. How fun is this? It's so fun to be on. Thank you for asking. I know. And so... Tina and I know each other and have sort of done a few projects together. And where we met in our journey is right when Tina was just about to take probably one of the <laughs> biggest leaps of your life, Tina. And and mm -hmm. so to me, right at that moment that I got to meet you, I got to sort of see you walk through that. And it was so inspiring to me. Yeah. And then 
I really think propelled me when I got to that place. I often said in my head, like, look at if Tina can take the leap, I can take the leap too. So you quit your right. job in corporate and then you I now did. run True You Teams, which is your dream job. Tell us a little bit about that whole situation and how you took the leap and what True You Teams is. Ah, so True You Teams, thank you, Erin. Yeah. Thank you for having me on. And I, I adore you. And so oh. I'm actually looking very forward to this. Right back at you, <laughs> um, sister. Yeah, so True You Teams is a leadership development company. And um, it's been, gosh, eight months is all it's been. So when I met you last year, yeah, I was, I was smack dab in the middle of kind of my plan that I had put together to make yeah. the leap. Because you don't just like... I mean, for me, I had worked, you know, for 22 years. And so my programming and my beliefs and all of that kind of stuff said, you you know, you work where you work and that's where you stay and you make the best of it and then you retire. And Right, and right. Just, you know, I woke up one day and everything, like literally everything on paper said I should be so happy. I had this amazing job. I worked at an amazing company. My family was awesome. And I just, there was something inside me that just, like it just something wasn't right and and so I knew that like I was meant for something different I knew that maybe the path that I was going down and maybe the struggles that I was having there might be a reason for that and it was because I wasn't really in my purpose I wasn't living my true purpose yeah. and I didn't know it at the time um but you know I mean we all know the feeling like Monday morning alarm goes off and you're like pull the covers over your head and you don't want to go to work in the morning and you know you dig your heels in and and I did that for so long and I just I was really lost and what I see now on the other side of it is that I was not alone I think in the time and in the moment yes like I felt like I was the only one doing this I was the only one going through this and as I you know, I've worked with so many people since then, and I think that it's almost like an epidemic in our society, right? We're waking up every day, and we're checking off this long list of things, and we're, like, living on the surface, and we're not really living our life. We're letting life oh. um, kind of rule us. hundred percent. I so, totally agree. Yeah. I mean, I was on this career path. I was climbing the ladder, all this kind of stuff. And what happened for me was, you know, I, I was starting to feel like, like, I'm not happy. I was in this grind. And I got a phone call one day from my daughter, who was 24 at the time. And she said, Mom, something really bad happened last night. And, you know, it was this, it was this huge wake up call, because she was, she was very much at her bottom. She was very much addicted to drugs and alcohol. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know it. Like, I was so caught up in yeah. And everything that I thought I was supposed to be doing that I just didn't see the stuff that was happening in my own family under my own nose. Yeah. And so it started this big project, um, this long, like long journey for me. I got really, really curious. I started reading books. I, um, I got started going to retreats. Like, how do I figure this out? And I just really got curious and started doing all these things and through it all kind of got woken up. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just woken up out of sleeping and like letting life control me. And it led me to this, to this beautiful place that I'm in today, where I wake up every day and I'm my own, I'm my own boss, and I've got this big mission and vision that I'm working towards, and I get to create, um, I get to create now, uh, yeah. whatever you know, kind of whatever it is that I'm doing. So, yeah, it's been quite a transformation and quite a journey. Yeah, I and I don't know if you have heard my part of the story. So I resonate very strongly with that waking up or having that little sneaking thought that this isn't exactly how it's supposed to be for me, but also yeah. not knowing what to do with it. And mine that I know I've talked about before on the podcast is I was driving my three amazing kids in the minivan and the thought creeped into my head, I'm not happy. And I had worked hard to get these kids to earth. So for me yeah. to sit in a minivan with sort of like exactly what you were saying on paper, I had the job I yeah. wanted, I had the, my family, I had my minivan life. And so that scared the bejesus out of me when that little yeah. thought crept into my head and I knew it was true. That yeah. was my it's truth. It's a wake up call, isn't it? Yeah, totally. So at the same time, I think that's when I was like, well, I can't, I'm not going to live the rest of my life and I'm not going to show my kids that I'm just yeah. going to go through the motions of life. I'm going to figure this out right. so that I'm happy. 
So anyway, yeah. I just yep. when you said that, it just I I just that is one of the most vivid parts of my life is that day that I thought mm-hmm. that in my minivan. So so yeah, I get that totally. on and such a level. Right. And I think and I talked to so many people and I know you have too that like that's not that's not unique. That's like right. a common thing. Like one day we wake up and we go, Oh my God, I'm not living the life that I really wanted to live. Right. And and so my company and the company that I developed is to help people through that process because I didn't like I didn't know what to do. Like where do I go? Who yes. do I reach out to? Thank God I found a couple of communities that really helped me work through it. But like now I get to create that community to help other people work through that. That is amazing. I mean, what what a testament to your own journey and how you use the things that might have been looked at ad, ad, as adversity as mm, yeah. really your strengths. And I think that happens so much in life where we go through these events and we look at these things that look like they're breaking us down. But when we move through them to the other side, we actually find out those are the things that are our our gifts that we get to use to help other yeah. people. Yeah. Absolutely. So, yep. so on that note, speaking of somebody who has gone through lots of metamorphosis in your life, <laughs> um, one of the biggest things I think we as parents in particular and even more specific women, moms, we deal with a lot of self-doubt and negativity. And I know mm. as you've traveled through your journey, you've had some times where you felt that it's held you back. I felt that too. How do you learn or how have you learned to move through that to, so you get to the other side? Yeah, I think I, 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 can't, uh, I can't tell you like how many times I, we're our own worst enemy. Right. I mean, yeah. I don't know if people realize that, but like I was my own worst enemy. I would wake up in the morning and I would watch my, you know, I'd look at myself in the mirror as I was getting ready. And it, and it was all about the, the thoughts in my mind were focused around, oh my God, this day is going to be just, you know, terrible. I got to meet with that person. And oh, this was, you know, and it was all like this low energy, like toxic, like I have to go through my day kind of a, kind of a mindset. And I didn't even realize that, you know, you just, you just have that mindset and you don't realize you're in it a lot right. of times until you go through some of the work to figure out how to have it not be that way. But like the first, how you spend your first hour in your day is, is how the rest of your day will go. And, and so today, how I've changed that around is through the journey and through the transformation, I've learned tools that help me really stay in the right mindset. So now in the morning when I'm getting ready, I'm saying things to myself like, you know, I am worthy. I am enough. You are a rock star. You're going to make this day rock, you know, and I'm saying good, positive, uplifting things yeah. to myself instead of running myself down. Yes. So that's been one of the biggest things um, that's really helped me. I think one of the biggest lessons out of all of it is that I had to fall in love with myself. Yes. Yes. And that sounds really weird. I, I know. I know. <laughs> you know. But, like, I didn't even know what that concept meant. And then all of a sudden, one day I went, oh, this is what this feels like. Yeah. Like, I'm proud of myself. Like, I worked really hard to get here. And I did do that. And I am strong. And I am confident. And I can do this. And and so when you really, really tune in to just really loving yourself in spite of all of the imperfections, which is kind of where I was at. I didn't think I was worthy of that love until I was completely perfect. Yes. And so... When you can love yourself in spite of those imperfections, it like opens up this huge world of, op- you know, of just opportunity and possibility. I know. And, and don't you think, too, when you first tell somebody, <laughs> they look at you like, uh-huh. <laughs> um, but then after they yeah. practice it for a while, I always say, do the action. I don't care if you believe yet. Do the action over right. and over because then you will build the belief yeah. system because you'll see the results. Totally. I've had people come back to me and go, Tina, like, I feel stupid. I'm sitting here looking at myself in the mirror, telling myself you're smart, you're beautiful, and I don't believe it. I'm like, I don't care. Keep doing it. Just keep doing it and keep doing it. Because one day you're going to be like, oh, I kind of believe it. If you keep doing the work and you stay in it, like it's breaking those old habits and those limiting beliefs and those things that we've, you know, I was told as I was growing up that it was selfish to think like that. Oh, yeah. And so we have that programming in us. 
Right, exactly. Well, and that's just from a brain perspective, you know, that's the neural network that you've carved. So the amount of times that you've said that negative thing to yourself, it has now traveled, if you've said it so many times, down into the subconscious level. And so when your car, you're driving in your thought car in your brain in the morning, Mm -hmm. it you're on like autopilot, you're getting to work without even thinking about it. And that's that negative loop that you just play in your head and you don't even realize that you are, right. you've driven all the way to work on a negative loop um, because it's mm-hmm. just who you've become. So yeah, I, totally. And then you get to work and your day goes like that. And then you come home at night and you're upset because of all the things that went bad at work. And now you're taking it out on your family. And yes. so like, what, I mean, they're so interchangeable anymore. It used to be, we could really separate work and home and you can't like, it's all one big connectivity ball now. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. That's so, so true. Yeah. So if we're not happy at home, we're taking it into work. And if we're not happy at work, we're bringing it home. And so part of my platform and what I and I know it's the same thing with you, right? Like we need to open up forums where we can have these conversations so that, you know, we can really start to just understand what's happening and not and be still and be aware of it. When we're not aware, we can't do anything. When we're aware, now we can we can start to heal and fix the problem. Yeah, 100%. And I actually have an activity that I do with kids that I coach. And I it they're just like really cheesy. Um, they were from Valentine's Day. But they're wreaths and they're hearts. <laughs> and I have kids hold them up in front of their faces and I do it with them. Um, but having them tell themselves the things that they're great at. And I am yeah. always shocked at kids at six and seven and eight years old have a very hard time saying anything positive about themselves to yeah. themselves in a mirror. And I'm like, whoa, we got to yeah. practice that. Because if we start looping on this at six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years old, right. I mean, that becomes yeah. your brain architecture. So I yeah. think even when you as a parent do that and you take that upon yourself, I'm going to retrain my actions and my brain so that I don't pass that on to my kid. I let my kids see myself saying those positive things to myself. Yeah, totally. That's where we break the lineage, right? Yeah. Because, I mean, my parents were yellers. You know, they yelled and screamed. I yelled and screamed, unfortunately. My kids are all in their 20s now. I wish I, I mean, if I had a wish, right, yeah. it would be to, that I could practice some of these when they were younger. But, like, there got to be a point on our journey where my kids were like, gosh, Mom, you know, it's been, like, years since you've yelled at us. Yeah. <laughs> so, they yeah. notice it. They know it. And, and how we act is what they pick up, and it's how they go on to – to raise their children. So it's really, really important that we stop these patterns. Oh, 100%. So the, you, you're so good at leading into my next question. So because your <laughs> kiddos are big, I love, and I think if you don't have a friend, a mom friend who has gone just that path in front of you a little bit you need to go find one find somebody who has already walked the path it's because you then you get to pick their brains it's like free therapy for you because then you get to see how somebody else did it um and you get to learn from their mistakes so that's what I love about you you're so honest about it what has been one of your biggest parenting challenges how'd you get through it and what did you and your family learn to make you stronger instead of break you apart yeah, I think I, I think I started it just a little while ago. You know, it was, I was so used to, I got pregnant when I was 20 years old with Courtney. Gotcha. So like, you don't plan for that, right? right. That's not the way my life, <laughs> that's not the way my life was supposed to go, but it's what it was. Yeah. And at a very young age, I had to, I got to grow up really fast and I started working really, really hard, very, very young to support a family, right? Then I had right. Tanner when I was 22. So I had my kids very young. What that did for me as an adult is, like, work your butt off, right? Right. Work your butt off, work your butt off, because I wasn't getting support necessarily on the other end at that point in time. And so I got so used to and so programmed to constantly work, 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 work. Yeah. That that took over. That, like, that led our life. Right. And I look back on it now, and there were so many. And that's that was before the smartphone. <laughs> right. I look back on it now and there were so many times at seven, eight, nine o'clock at night when the kids were right there and I was on my laptop into work getting, you know, checking emails and getting stuff done at work. And I wasn't tuned in and present everything yes. that you teach, Erin. I wasn't present 
in those really, really crucial moments when I needed to be present. Yes. And so, like, through this journey and through this process, unfortunately, I learned it after they were already grown up. But, I mean, the healing in our family that's occurred even even later on in life is is so transformational and so crazy when you think about it. Because when we as people, as individuals, take control of our own thoughts and our own reactions and our own mindset, and we just really stay in our truth in that and stick in that, even when people get mad and upset because we're acting different and we are different, it does create a ripple effect yeah. like, throughout your whole family. It just does. Yeah, I totally agree with you that way. And I think what you just said, um, I don't know, it was kind of an aha moment for me. Because your kids, you said so much healing happened as they were older kids and into their adulthood. I think for those of us who have younger kids or are going through it right now, to realize that part of being a family and family life is almost going through a constant state of healing. But that's a t- such a oh, teaching absolutely. tool for your kids that they can offer forgiveness and move through and heal and learn from their mistakes. And it's a constant give and take when you're in a family. Yeah, and that we're all growing at the same time. This isn't because yes. I'm the parent. I'm already grown and I've already got it, all the answers, which honestly, my ego, that's who I was. Like, yeah. I have all the answers. I'm the parent. When I didn't have all the answers, right? I still don't. We never have all the answers. And so I would have approached my family unit, I think, in a much different way that we are growing and going through this life together versus this hierarchical kind of thing that was happening. Yeah. And I mean, that's the same thing that's happening in business and in leadership, too, right? Like, we've always had this leadership of hierarchy and it's not about that anymore. It's about team and it's about working together and collaboration and diversity. And so... We've seen that, like you said it, I think, at the very beginning, a team can be a family, a team can be a work unit, a team can be a community, teams come in all different sizes and shapes, right? Yeah, totally. So when you do this, now that I'm thinking about it from a parenting perspective, when you do these business leaderships, um, when I think about it, as a mom, you're kind of the CEO of your own family. How does being a parent today require the same leadership skills that you teach all these companies? I think it's the same thing. Like leadership is leadership. And for me, this was a wake up call for me, a big light bulb for me, because in my mind, when I would hear the word leadership, I would immediately think of a title, like somebody that has a title of a leader, a manager, a leader, a director, something like that. And I really pull leadership back to the individual and the person. My leadership and how I show up in every situation is not only leading my life, but it's leading others around me. And that can be personally, it can be professionally, it can be whatever it is. So I think that our world is so used to looking at leadership as that hierarchy and like my work and what I believe my mission and my vision and purpose is, is to really wake people up to the fact that like that leadership and that definition of leadership has evolved and changed. And leadership is about who are you self, how are you self leading yourself and showing up first? Yeah. And once you, you know, once you kind of, cause there's a whole evolution that goes with that. There's so many, there's so much unawareness out there. Yeah. And I could, that's the sleeping part, right? Yep. And so it's waking up to this consciousness. It's waking up to this awareness that we are living in a different world and that it's going to take different skill sets to really navigate through that world and thrive in that world. And, you know, and that's, like, that's what we're doing. That's what you're trying to do is open up that conversation. It's what I'm trying to do. And so we open that up in corporate. We open it up in the house. We open it up in our schools. Yeah. And I just, I feel like if we can keep moving in this direction, it just makes such a different world in the future. Uh, I think that, and I think what you just said about really to be a leader, you have to take care of yourself from a mom side. I think that's so huge because I think like self-care is such a huge buzzword right now. Um, And it often, I think it's like, you know, some things as far as like going to get a massage or self-care that way, but really truly honing your own skills as a leader and taking that upon yourself, that's the self-care you need so that you can raise everybody else up with you. Totally. And if women could, like women traditionally, and I was, until I was 47 years old, this was me, right? I 
Like I took care of everything else in my life and everyone else uh-huh. in my life. And then at the end of the day, if there, if there was anything left, which there 90% of the time was not, right. then I might do something for me. But it was never even a focus on my mind. It was always all about everybody and everything else. And I really feel like if women could just make that switch that, oh, it's about me first. And when I, I can be that much stronger and then to have that much bigger of an impact, I mean, women rising would be craziness. I, I totally agree with you. And I think I even have times where we, I have not completely reprogrammed myself. And I recognize it, which that's the mindful recon, you know, recognition that it's happening. But I still fall back into that old habit of putting myself yeah behind everybody else um so just recognizing like that's let me rethink that i don't have to think about it that way because nine times out of ten my family's not thinking about it that way if that's something i put on myself Mm -hmm. yep that's what kind of going back to like we're our own worst enemy sometimes Mm -hmm. where yeah it's really just a shift in the mindset that says no wait when i'm whole i'm a rock star and i can create so much more than i do right now yeah, and so it's just like it's grabbing that whatever that is inside to be able to pull that up, and it just like I said, it opens up so much more in your life that you didn't even know was there. Yeah, and then I I think you're so more alive and present and flourishing in front of your kids. I mean, they just feed off of that. They see how great you feel and you're doing, and how much time you want to spend with them and get to know them because you're not you haven't shut down the part that's feeling guilty or shamed about not right. doing it. So, yes. Exactly. Ah, amazing. Okay. Uh, I'm switching gears a little bit. I want to hear <laughs> about your book, The Strength of Our Anchors. Oh, yeah. Tell me about it a little bit. Yeah. So um, I, I'm, I wrote a book, which is really cool. I did not so write cool. the book. I have one chapter in the book. This, this book is kind of like a chicken soup for the soul. It was 10 of us women, 10 women got together. Yeah. And we, we each have a chapter in the book, and it's really, um, each one of our stories is different. It's really us just being able to tell our story, and the story that I tell about in the book is that phone call that I talked about earlier when my daughter called me, yeah. and kind of um, what happened, you know, through that whole process of, it was just like this huge awakening for our whole family, and um, and so, yeah, so that's, I I have the bookend at the very last chapter of the book, and uh, it's just a really great book. It's, there's a lot of really great stories, and uh, I think when you read something like that or when you read any kind of a Gabby Berenstein or Brene Brown or, yep. I don't know, you know, any of those kinds of authors, you start to realize that you're not alone. Yeah, and, and, I, so, and I think this is yeah. such an important book if you don't have that structure of, you know, maybe that friend circle for you, like maybe you feel very isolated for whatever reason and you don't feel like there's a whole bunch of people that you can reach out to, but you're trying to get to this one, this book sounds like the way to do it. You get to hear and be yeah. sort of friends in the book and hear how these other women have done this. Right. And here, the, the more I immerse myself in this work, and I know that you'll probably agree with this because you're in the same work, like the more I immerse myself in this work and the more people that I talk to and the more people that I interview and coach and train, I realize how similar we are. Yes. Like it doesn't, like none of it matters. We are, we are so similar and we have the same pains and we have the same fears and the same doubts and, and our whole history before us says that showing that is weak and showing that is not the way to do it. And when we can come out of that and just be completely vulnerable and find the community that will help us be our best self, like we can let all that shame and all that guilt and all that fear go. And you just, you go from like living in fear to living in freedom. Totally. I don't. And there's tons of places and people and organizations and sites out there that will help you get there. I I 100% agree with you. So let's, on that note, since I know we're going to end this podcast and then I'm going to get a flurry of DMs <laughs> and Facebooks and emails saying, okay, we listen to Tina. How do we get some more Tina in our lives? Or that person who's listening and they're just like, I want it. I don't know what I want to do yet. I haven't figured it out, yeah. but I know I want more of what these two ladies are talking about. I want to move along that continuum. So if somebody reaches out to me and says, I need Tina in my life, 
what do you have for them? Well, a couple of different things. Awesome. Um, just to kind of give you some information, my website is trueuteams.com. So just T R U E Y O U T E A M S dot com. Um, that has like all my information and background and products and all that kind of stuff out there. And I'll put that um, all in the show notes so you guys can just click it. Awesome. And then my email is Tina at trueuteams.com. But here's like, here's what I have as an offer because I would, it's crazy how, no matter how many, where I go to speak, I do a lot of speaking. Um, if I'm out speaking, if I'm out training, if I'm doing one-on-one coaching, it never fails that like what you just said is what people, where people are at. They're like, I love what you said. Like I'm super inspired right now. I don't have a clue of where to start. Right. And so I, because of that, um, you know, I was creating like these four month programs and <laughs> all this like big stuff and people, a lot of the times when you hear this message for the first time, you're a little overwhelmed, right? right. And you right. don't know exactly where to start. And so I created a, I have a strategy session and you can find this on my site, but I have a strategy session um, that what I do is I just, the the process that I walk you through, um, it's really, I've done so many of them. It's so cool because no matter what your situation is or your background or where you're at, we get to the end of that session and there's a little bit of pre-work that the person has to do before coming into that session, but we get to the end of that. And there's massive clarity, oh, right? There's, yeah. there's clarity in what 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 that person needs to do next, where that person needs to go, and then I send them off with that. Yeah. Um. You know, I do some follow, send them off with that, and then the strategy session is kind of designed for like when you nail that thing that you're doing and you're ready for your next goal, come back and we'll do another one. Get clarity on the next goal. Go get it done. Come back. You right? So I love it really that. Depends on how fast that person wants to go. Yeah. Well, and I think from like mom, if I'm thinking about it from a mom perspective, I love that so much because when you think about overhauling your whole, like I want to make all these changes, but really we just need to start with the one thing, practice that, nail that, and then come back and go for the next one. I mean, and you just, once you do one, you're like, it's almost like, it's almost like when I run races and I'm like, I never want to do that again. When can I do the next one? I know it's so true. And here's the thing. My job is to work you out of not needing to ever come back to me. My job is to yes. make you your own best coach. Oh my so gosh. That when I love you have it. that next goal, now you know the process and you know what to go through so that you can go crush that next goal. That is so, I always tell when I go into work with schools and teachers, that is what I always say. I say my goal is to make my job not relevant anymore to give you right. guys all the skills and these kids to walk around. Once these kids have all the skills, I'm no longer needed because everybody's jamming it out. So if I can yeah, make absolutely. myself can not necessary, that'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. And then you can go to the next school and make that impact. And then, yes. you know, so it's about making impact and, and you know, how you want to chunk it out and how you want to do it. The challenge is that you know, a lot of people will go to a conference or they'll go to a retreat or a training or what, you know, dream bank, whatever it is, and yeah. be really pumped up and motivated. But then they get back into life and like life is noisy. Right. And they get caught up in the in yep. everything else. And they again, as women, we want to take care of everyone else. Yep. And so then we still don't do what you know. So this is just a way to help hold you accountable. I love it. Well, I will link. Um, so Tina has given me some information. I will link that all for you guys. So you can just click and then go get right in and get a strategy session started. And I just want to say thank you, Tina, so much. It was, I thank you for everything that you've done for me, but also thank you for all your knowledge that you just gave us on this podcast. I appreciate it so much. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. It's been super fun. Now I'm going to have you on mine. All right, everybody. That's it for us today. Thank you for joining us in this conversation. I hope you got some wonderful tips, tricks, information. Um, If you want to find out more about Tina, I'll put the links below, but you're going to go to trueuteams.com and you can find out a little bit more about her. And if you, after listening to this, want to get some more information for your family about how to mindfully boost your brains, 
and get some resources, some games, some journals, you're going to want to find us at the Rooted Family Circle. And again, you can go to the therootedfamily.com and just click on the Rooted Family Circle. That's our online monthly membership. That's where I boost those brains with you as a parent and offer that coaching experience, that parent coaching um, to help you make your child's experience in this lifetime one where they thrive not just survive i want to decrease the stress increase the social emotional awareness cognitive goals and peacefulness that you find in your home so if you want to join me and grab a free month you can just go to the rooted rooted family circle and in your coupon code, you can just use the word podcast. The word podcast will get you off your first month for free. So if you want to learn a little bit more about how you can easy cheesy lemon squeezy make these little changes in your family's life that have a huge impact, check us out with the Rooted Family Circle. One of the things, and I just want to share with you guys that I heard from a circle member this month was we started using your tools that you offer in September superhero theme. And we have seen a dramatic change in two weeks with how my child is able to handle frustration. Your frustration awareness chart plus the parent brain spleen and the parent blueprint helped us help our kid choose how they're feeling and then use a strategy if it's not the way they want to feel, which is amazing. And we're building that right into their brains at a time when they're building the architecture. So it just goes in there. So when we get to be adults, we don't have to rewire our brain and learn that new. That's just